Good morning everyone. It's Thursday morning, the 1st of April. Welcome to a new month. And this morning for our Lent reading, we're going to be reading from John chapter 19. And we're going to read the first 16 verses. So let's read this together. Then Pilate had Jesus flogged with a lead tip whipped. The soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put a purple robe on him. Hail, King of the Jews, they mocked as they slapped him across the face. Pilate went outside again and said to the people, I'm going to bring him out to you now, but understand clearly that I find him not guilty. Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns in the purple robe, and Pilate said, look, here is the man. When they saw him, the leading priests and the temple guards began shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Take him yourselves and crucify him, Pilate said, I find him not guilty. The Jewish leaders replied, by our law, he ought to die because he called himself the son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more frightened than ever. He took Jesus back into the headquarters again and, and, and asked him, where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Why don't you talk to me? Pilate demanded. Don't you realise I have the power to release you or to crucify you? Then Jesus said, you would have no power over me unless it were given to you from above. So the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Then Pilate tried to release him, but the Jewish leader shouted, If you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who declares himself a king is a rebel against Caesar. When they said this, Pilate brought Jesus out to them again. Then Pilate sat down in the judgment seat on the platform that is called the stone pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was now about noon on the day of preparation for the Passover. And Pilate said to the people, look, here is your king. Away with him, they yelled. Away with him, crucify him. What? Crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the leading priest shouted back. Then Pilate turned Jesus over to them to be crucified. Amen. It's the start of Jesus' journey to the cross. It's probably the Friday morning by now. Um, Good Friday as we would call it, so that's tomorrow. And Pilate doesn't really want to sentence Jesus. He can't find anything that he is guilty of. And yet the people are shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And the the end, the Pharisees are shouting, we have no king but Caesar. You know, the Israelites a long time ago begged for a king. They said they wanted a king to rule over them. And whenever they're told, no, they shouldn't have a king, they still wanted a king. And in the end, Saul becomes their first king, and then after that, David's. But it starts a downfall of their society. Because they put somebody in the place of God. And because of that, then things get turned upside down. Um, Solomon, who built the temple, enslaves the people. And subsequent kings are awful to them. They're horrible to them. They are anything but godly. And the people turn away from God. So right down here now, in this passage, we have them saying that... We have no king but Caesar. God's people have forgotten who was their true king. They have forgotten that God is their king. And that God is the one who they should worship and who they should submit to. The one who rules over them. And instead they're so concerned about their own position in society that they want this man Jesus crucified. Now we know it's fulfilment of scripture. We know from Isaiah that Jesus was going to be silent. Just like he was silent before Pilate. That he didn't argue back. He didn't fight back. We know that Jesus is going to let himself go to the cross to to die. So that we can have our sins forgiven. But the people. The people whip themselves up against Jesus. It's the mob mentality. Where a few people stir the crowd and the crowd get carried along. And before you know it, terrible things happen. Before they know it, they're going to have crucified the Son of God. 
a terrible thing to happen, but for us, a very necessary thing. That our Saviour would die for us. That the Son of our King would be crucified so that he could truly be King of our lives. You know, if you think about the Old Testament, you think about the, the system of sacrifices. Every time for the people to have their sins forgiven, there had to be bloodshed. That was the only way for their sins to be covered. And it wasn't that the blood was pleasing to God, but it was that the blood satisfied the cost of their sin. Now we're going to have a sacrifice which covers all of that. Once for all time. Who is king in your life today? What's the most important thing? You know, in today's society, sometimes it's football is the most important thing. Or it's a car. Or it's a relationship, which is an earthly relationship. Or it's something else, it's money, it's possessions. There are things that we put as first in our lives. When actually, it should be God who is first in our life. Who is first in our lives today? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, thank you for your word. Thank you for how you read about what Jesus has done for us. And Lord, may it challenge us about our priorities in life and where you are in our life. Father, help us to always put you in first place, to have you as our Lord and King. Because Father, we know that when we do that, everything else will fall into place. Everything else will be in its rightful place. Help us this day, Father, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining in this morning. Uh, remember, we've got our next United service tonight at 7 o'clock. The link will go up and be released, released on Facebook at around about 6 o'clock. And you can follow that link through to the service. And remember as well that we are back in church this Sunday. So if you haven't already booked your seat, get on to the phone now. Either phone uh, Barbara in the office or send me a little text message and book in for your seats. But in the meantime, take care and God bless.